you load up your true drive software and you go down to the settings bar here and then we scroll down and we click on configure analog input so we hit that guy and let me just drag this a little bit bigger for you guys too so it's taking up the full amount of space Okay, so here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven configurable inputs or analog inputs that are going into the SimiCube. So we've configured our brake as brake, our throttle as throttle, and our clutch as clutch. So you just click on the drop down menu and choose the pin that corresponds with the input you want to use. So gas pin, obviously, for throttle. And then if we press our throttle, you can see it's working. Now, we do have these adjustments here on the right hand side for dead zone low and dead zone high, as well as a button to invert the input if we need to and then a button to reset to default. Now, importantly as well, we do have the option to export and import INI files. So what you might wanna do and what uh, Racework actually suggests you do is create different profiles of different types of cars. So say for example, GT3 cars are quite different to drive to the Porsche 911 Cup car, for example, in iRacing. So I have quite different braking profiles for those two cars to allow for the differences. So we'll use the throttle as an example and you can see I've copied and pasted my uh, final configuration up into the field up here as well where it's not being used simply so I have a reference point. But normally by default, these would be set to 100. So we'll set them back to 100 now. And you can see when we do that, we now have a throttle that is already at 27% when it's fully released and it only goes up to 74% when we fully engage or fully depress the throttle. So what we wanna do now is slowly increase this number. So if we go to say 1000, you can see that percentage now drops down. So we wanna make it all the way down, basically so that the throttle is disengaged when it's not being pressed. So we go to say 16,000. You can see now we're down to five or 4%. We wanna have a little bit of dead zone there as well, just so if we're resting our foot on the throttle and it's pressing a little bit, it doesn't cause us to be accelerating in the game. Now, the throttle pedal itself has a really nice initial kind of bite. It's, there's no slop in it whatsoever. So you can actually rest your foot on it without pressing it at all. But what I like to do is still have a little bit of dead zone. So we're gonna crank that back up. And the number that I landed on was 18,758. And you can see now with the throttle fully disengaged, we've got a reading of zero. And I've got a little bit of give there so I can rest my foot on it before it starts to read. And then as soon as I start to press it a little bit, it starts to go up. But we do still need to configure our dead zone high because obviously when we're pushing the pedal all the way down, we're only getting 64% throttle input. So again, starting at 100, we can work our way up. If we go to say 20,000, it is going to 100% at full throttle. But what I like to do is I like to have a little bit of high point dead zone there simply so that I don't have to push the pedal all the way to the floor to get 100% throttle. And the reason for that is because if we do get a sensor that starts to read a little bit off and we don't realize, we might not be getting full throttle in the game. Now we do have an adjustable physical deflection here as we showed you before with that little screw that we can move in and out. And I have adjusted that to the point that I like and that's purely subjective. But I do still like to have that little bit of high dead zone there just in case we do have a problem. So we're gonna set that to 24,000 now. And I mean, these numbers are completely arbitrary. You can set these to be whatever suits your preference, but you can see now here, I'm getting to 100% and I still have a little bit of push left in the throttle pedal before it goes all the way down. So that is how I like to configure the throttle. Basically the same exact principles apply to the brake and the clutch now as well. So we'll have a little look at the brake and because this is a hydraulic brake, you do have a really nice sort of pressure point there where you've got that initial little bit of bite in the pedal where it pushes down and then, and obviously we'll talk about this more when we go for a drive, but you can sort of feel the initial pressure point there at about 30% as I've got it configured. And with the way I've got this configured at the moment, I do have to push it very hard so this particular profile that I'm working on at the moment is my profile for the 911 Cup car in iRacing. And as we know, that likes to lock up the rear brakes very, very easily. So I like to have it so that my comfortable sort of braking point where I want to sort of be pushing to the maximum is about 80% braking force in the game. And that sort of stops me from locking up too much. So holding the pedal about where we want it to be for 100% braking. You can see when you push the pedal down, you do get a little bit of pressure drop there from the initial push down. So it does tend to sort of drop down a little bit and that is perfectly normal for hydraulic pedals that use a pressure-based sensor. So we want our initial bite to sort of sit at around about the 80% mark and then drop down from there. So we're gonna raise that number up. We'll start off with say uh, 40,000 for reference. And you can see now when I push that down, it's going all the way up to 100%, which is far too sensitive. 
So we go down to say 35,000. Well, get rid of the four. And that's maybe about right, yeah. Okay, so that's my initial bite there. And then the pressure slowly falls off as I roll off the brake for my trail braking. And that feels about right. Now, again, this is for the cup car. If I was driving a GT3 car, I'd probably have a little bit more sensitive than this is. But you can see there how the adjustment works. So we move on to the clutch now. Basically the same principle again. I do have a habit of resting my foot on the clutch a little bit. So I probably want a little bit more dead zone there. And you can see now I have to push the pedal in a little bit before I get a reading at all. That's probably a little bit too much dead zone there. So I might go back down to 9,000. Yeah, that's better. So a little bit of bite there. I can rest my foot on it without any reading, but then as I start to push the pedal down, it goes to 100%. Now, again, we can adjust the physical deflection on this pedal, but what I like to do is still have a little bit of give there, pretty much the same as what I had with the throttle, but more so. So I only wanna push it to about maybe 75% full scale deflection before I get to 100% clutch. And that means that I can quickly shift gears without having to sort of push my foot all the way to the ground. That does save me time between shifts. So. Again, I landed at about 50,000 for my high point and 9,000 for my low point. And if I was to lower that to say 30,000, you can see now when I push the clutch down, even all the way down, I'm only getting to about 40% application. So set it back to 50,000 and there we go. So once we're happy with it, we can export to the INI file and I might save it in a slightly more sensible place than the Windows System 32 folder, which is where it wants to save by default. We'll just save it to the desktop for now. That is absolutely fine. So then we can go in and set our profiles for the other cars that we want to drive as well. You don't need to set a profile for every single car, but I would recommend you do it if you want to get the absolute most out of these pedals.